F, F this. F this. F this. Fuck this, Mr. White. And, and we, are, we are going to switch the camera around. Switch the camera around first. Okay. So it's not facing. Hey, the guys. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, there we go. All right. We are recording in three, two. All right, folks. Well, welcome to F this. Oh, you're hitting oh, the live You got to mute that track. Mute that track. Stop the recording. You hey, guys. Mute. It's recording over your last record. That's uh -oh. uh oh. Stop. Hello, everybody. Sorry about this, guys. Hi. Technical difficulties. Just bleeding into everything right now. Welcome, okay. welcome, welcome. One track. <laughs> Leisha. You took us to the bathroom, is that what you said? Is that good? Oh, oh we oh, took you to the bathroom. <laughs> no. No way. No way, Jose. No Alright, guys. Hello again. Are we recording? Oh. Yeah, record. Alright, folks. Well, welcome to F This. Um, it's a lovely, lovely fucking episode, this episode. Um, it's going to be all the props to the moms in the world, the moms in our lives. And moms in general. Yo mama. That's right. Single, so, married. So, uh, all of the above. Fucking like moms with two moms, and moms with one mom, and moms with eight moms. How are moms for you? Hey, hey, mom. <laughs> hey, mom. That's right. So, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm Duff. Shantae. Malcolm. That's right. How the fuck are you? Hey, How hey, the hey. F are you? How the F are you? How the F are you, moms? We're gonna do it now. I have to order pizza for us too, I think. Pizza. Okay, pizza. so if right. you guys are listening right. now, you found us on Facebook at uh, F. Is it F dot this account? That's yeah. the link for Facebook. Correct. If you are on Twitter, that's where you're doing the stuff, the twitting with all your pals. You're it's F podcast. Um, you can Skype well, talk yeah. to us, call in at fthispodcast at gmail.com. Our Instagram is fthisaccount, so hashtag fthisaccount. You can see lots of pictures there of us, and you can check in and message us there also. Our website, www.fthispodcast.com, and our email, hit us up, send us pictures, ideas, questions, messages, bitches and moans, whatever you got, fthispodcast at gmail.com. That's right, that's Thank right. You. So what's everyone up to? What's been going down? It's happening. How, how We're in the midst of a cold spell right now. Can I just say that? How yeah. much yeah. snow could snow be snowing? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's snow it's the most snow I've ever snow seen. Could snow, ever could snow. If you live in Kitimat, you know what's up. Well, if you've been cleaning up snow, you probably ran right out of room right for that snow. At the wind chills 10. My I think the snow oh, heaters is probably one of my favorite things. Right? Every time I hear them coming, I watch out the window. They're grinding okay, away the wait, snow in the road like and then throwing it in people's front right yards. Is that the wind so like mine, yeah. I always watch okay, to see if so they're I'm throwing it in someone's, um, yeah. like, if they're throwing it in a bad place. Like, if they're not paying attention and they're throwing it in people's driveways and stuff, and they just keep going. Like, do they? Do you think that they do it like, accidentally and then they go back and fix it? Or do you think they're just like, well, screw that guy's car? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Screw that guy's driveway. He didn't need to go anywhere. He doesn't need to go anywhere today. Fuck yeah, it. I'm just like, he doesn't need to go to work. It's, it's been real Sunday. intense, especially with us not having a vehicle. There's been days where I'm like, well, I guess today is not happening. Because I'm like, there's no way I'm walking. And if I can't get a hold of anybody, or if it's too late, or if it's too crazy, I'm just like, sorry. Bye. We're going to read some books today, Pollux. Bye. <laughs> I don't Bye know day. what to do. Bye, day. It's, it's, been, it's been like wide out, snowing so hard, crazy. Yes. I have dope pictures Anything, of you guys. Anything else that has <laughs> dope been, uh, pictures happening? So well. Nicole said that Neil's dad worked in Kitimat and when the snow covered all the vehicles in the parking lot. Oh, I like full on, that. like you can He showed pictures. This was, it was like, like years eight ago. feet tall. That's great. Yeah, this yeah. was like a few years ago. It was 2015. 2015. Big snowfall, 2015. Sorry that we're running late, guys. I know. Thanks for coming. Yeah, yeah thanks, thanks for, for thanks for sticking it out. Yeah, really. Corinne said she took a whole shower while she was waiting. 
Nice. <laughs> a whole last yeah. shower. A whole last shower. Most of you probably had enough time to clean your ice hot bath all the way through. Lights and candles. Play Sarah some, asked because we're little little in Canada. Is not Canada made of snow? Right. And I said that right. was my first impression too. But when I came here, everything was hella green. This yeah. is the first time ever that I experienced snow like this since the five years we've been doing this. Yeah. I've never seen so much snow. No. It's supposed to get bad. it's supposed to get worse. Especially. You know, Canada is going to be the new North Pole. Yeah, right? it's switching up. Switching We're up. already We're the North right. Pole. <laughs> yeah. It's moving down a little bit. Love yourself, bro. Yeah. Eat some of those Daughtries. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the best Daughtries, right? The lone wolves. <laughs> the lone wolves. Start getting backflips like the Whiskers cats. F this. So you know, F does anybody have any F this is this F week? F this snow, basically. Yeah, fuck mm. this weather. No, I'm still. F I'm still. Cold. I got one. I got one. I'm still on the F this. My fucking car is still. In the shop. Yeah, F it's our been, effing car. Our effing car has been in the effing shop for over two effing fucking months. And yeah. so, F that. And for the people yeah. who um, who they don't do live in Canada who follow, which is a lot of people, because I'm from Southern California, a lot, a lot of people I know don't understand about where we live. We live so far up north, we're almost in Alaska, and the weather's crazy, right? But also where we live is so far away from other things that we have to wait for not only a transmission to be available, but to get to us. And okay. it happened right before Christmas. So guess who's not open? Nobody. No car no. places. Nothing. Nobody who has parts to vehicles, right? So we're just sitting around waiting, and it sucks major balls. Like in California, you go somewhere, they fix your shit. Yeah. And you're out. Yeah, hydraulics put in like 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah exactly. And the worst part yeah. of the situation, too, is this year it's our transmission. Last, last year, year it was, was our, our engine. engine. So we were out of car two months last year. This happened. And now this year it's happening again. So we hit, we, the car guy calls us. Good news, right? Uh, warranty's covering it. We're just finding you a transmission right now. Found one. We're going to get approved. And then we'll get it in. You guys are going to be good. Cool. We're celebrating. And I told him, you know, should we just plan a Christmas dinner? Should we should we plan some events for next year, or are we going to not do this again? Because are we going to do three years in a row? <laughs> I need to know right now, because I think we should plan this better so that we have something as backup. <laughs> and then go. with this being the fucking shittiest snow, too, right now, it's like double. It's double yeah. whammy. Yeah, so F this. F this weather. We can all unanimously say yeah. it. Yes. F, F this, this weather. weather. Is it because yeah. you can't say the word? It's the price no, we no, pay we for living somewhere it. gorgeous. It's just, it's just we living. live in a beautiful place, and these are the prices we pay for it. Right. Well, so that's that. You got any F's or do we all agree? The weather, man. Fuck the weather. The weather, the weather yeah. outside. Yeah. Weather. Fuck the weather. Fuck our arthritis, <laughs> because my shit is fucked up right now oh, in this shit. weather. The cold is eating our bones. Uh, your cold's eating your old ass. Order pizza for this. <laughs> I'm getting <laughs> older. Literally getting older. If you order one, it's 30, and you get a second one for eight. Right, I know, I do have Canadian O's, Sarah. Every time I go home, everybody's like, what? Shantae is Canadian. They have me now. It's been it's been forever. Yeah. I'm Canadian. Uh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> but, sorry. 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 It's true. When I pass people in the grocery store, Sturdy I say, oh, Buddha? excuse me. Oh, you sorry. don't order pizza. There's a bag of no. pizza right there. <laughs> Sorry Here, about that. Always sit, roll over, and so, sit. Move along. So we this. like to start things off with talking about what the F is up, and then we say F this, and F this this time is the weather. Fuck that weather. And then we want to move <laughs> the into weather is up, uh, Def, do you have anything to rant about? Well, um, I don't, I don't, no. No? Not really. Not really. Not re I've been kind of, I've, I've been kind of in, in a, <laughs> in a bad bad time, 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 place that I don't necessarily, are you guys still doing anything? Well, we're coming I off mean, the holidays. There was, I mean, there was one thing that okay, so actually Neil and I we were. Is there we any like universal pizza home favorites? Day, and, what um, will everybody eat that likes pizza? Cheese, tomato. Hawaiian? Is there any pineapple haters? No, uh, she can't have Hawaiian, but that's fine. She'll okay. What? Think she's allergic. Okay. And uh, what don't you like on a pizza then? It doesn't matter. Only pineapple. Okay. So we got one. Thirty <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. so, We we were. I was driving Neil back home, and in this in this car ride, we were just discussing. Um, um, sex work. Yeah. Oh, and, perfect. Let's do so and, and, uh, Hawaii, the right? idea behind sex work and why it's yeah. Such and a then no, the second one will be spinach. And, no, no, and it's not even just the sex Feta, work. Feta, tomato, tomato no, no. onion. We were talking about how how sex in general, and in, in uh, let's say the Western point of view, onion, you know, North onion, American onion, point onion. of view, is kind of like a taboo. It's a big no. 
You know, being naked is a big thing. Extra sauce, you know, and a little not, bit of garlic not, in the sauce on that one. Not, not being able to run around naked. <laughs> or it's like you can go, you can go like during the summer in France and you go to the beaches and people are just running around naked, and it's not a deal. It's not a thing. It's not like I want to run around with fucking chubby because it's not one to people come into the tattoo shop, right? But they've created they've created this stigma be behind be being uh, nude and uh, sexual encounters is a fucking bad thing, mm -hmm. which then just kind of dribbled into the whole yep. idea about sex work being a bad thing, and then pornography being a bad thing, and that whole thing about that? Where where if you watch too much porn, it's going to alter your idea oh, about what sex. Is to you. I'm like, okay, well, I, I watch a shit ton of fucking violent movies. That hour and a half does not change my point of view on how I live my life. I don't walk around shooting okay, people so and punching people and fucking people because, because, because I watched seven hours of John Wick the other day. You know what I mean? Like, it's 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 don't shot, do that. Be so I'm not gonna go around and like fucking care. choking out bitches and fucking them in the ass and just whatever. You know what I mean? It's it's it's, 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 it's just not what's gonna happen. It's just the glorification of what's okay, they're producing, and that's it. That's entirely it. And if you take it that way, then maybe there's something a little wrong with you. Not what's being produced. Right. Is what we're saying. You know what I mean? It's just that, that was just something that we were we were discussing. And the problem with that and all the judgmental crap that around that is that nobody gets to freely be themselves because of that feeling. Not yes. no. Can no, I make? You can I, totally I hear, be into all separate. kinds of different crap and yeah. you have that, and you, the judgmental crap is just going to keep you behind curtains. So I think I want to make a statement. I heard something that was really good. It was a meme the other day, and it said, "If you think." that being a sex worker is degrading, then I hope you enjoy your drive into work on Monday in your cubicle and you have an enlightening experience when you get there. <laughs> like, fucking come on, man. Right? Like, it's 2020. If you, whatever you, if you love yourself and you love what you do, it doesn't matter whether it's, and this is gonna be sound harsh, it doesn't matter whether it's slang and dope, being in the military, selling your ass, doing tattoos, working on cars, it doesn't matter what it is. If that's what you love, and that what ma makes you feel happy, do you feel that that's providing for your existence? The judgment of other people doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. It Sarah, doesn't. And also Sarah was just saying too, um, what about porn and sexual expectations? And that's a big one too, is all these kids watching porn and thinking that this is how things are supposed to be. Well, that's okay. That's okay. But if that kid really believes that, then you need to move into the position where you either A, get in, involved in the adult film industry, because those people are going to line up with you. in a different direction than I thought. Well, no, I think, I think, that, I think that, that if you have those expectations, then you need to have somebody else that also follows that protocol. But I think that you'll be seriously. Uh, surprised when you get there and realize that that's work and home is completely different. Exactly. If you're in a relationship with a sex worker, you, you're not going home to have sex every day. No. You got to go to work the and do that. Plumber's not fixing the plumbing at their household. Yeah, but if you want to have sex every day, my family's not getting cakes left and right. So I don't yeah, know. and so, but by all means, but if you want to eat cake every day. Be a, fucking, be a cake maker. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? That doesn't mean you're going to go make yourself a cake after work. No. But you're welcome to taste whatever is happening during the day. Right. If you really enjoy sex that much, if it makes you that happy, then yeah, yeah. then then be fucking involved in the adult film industry. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that, in my nothing opinion. Nothing at all. Yeah. You know, and, it's, and, it's, and, and it's not, it's not even that. I mean, it, there should be an interdiction. If, if somebody, if somebody believes that the the, the aggressiveness that behind some of the, the, the pornography, <laughs> there should be an interdiction with somebody who's believing this situation. If their young mind's being altered like that, then yes, there should be there should be an intervention with something to be set straight. And be like, look, that's not how you treat a woman. That's not what you do to a woman. Unless that woman asks for it. Unless there's consent to this situation. And as parents and as adults, we need to speak to people about that. We need but to express that. you got to express the reality of a Having situation. Having respect for well, other people and yourself. Yeah. Also, too, and that like porn kind of exaggerates everything. Like, that's it not how it it's exactly how it is. is. So it's Disney. like Hollywood. Exactly. Like, you know, it's like everything else. Yeah. It's, it's like Karen, every that's what other... I was saying. That's what I was getting at, is that it sets an expectation that... That girls are just straight up enjoying the shit out of themselves. Some of them are, but if you watch the reality of it, it is a job. People yeah. are going to filming Make and making porn as a job. Yeah. This is what they do. They're not. It's not all their fun. 
Now, kids don't know that though. That's what Sarah is saying is that kids oh, yeah. don't that's know right. that. That's I, what I'm saying. Is that they're going home ha losing their virginity, thinking that they got to do all this weird shit. No. So after the question, it kind of went off topic because I think the question was more mainly concerning expectations that people are expecting of others at exactly. home. Exactly. And I think around that question that runs into communication. Yes. If you're with someone yes. who expects way too much of you, maybe it's not the right, right. fit. Exactly. 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 Communication. Yes. You were like Thank this. You. <laughs> Hold on. So there. We cover that. So I just I don't think that as a woman too, as a woman and I'm coming at it from that way, I don't I don't see sex work as being something that's so degrading and horrible. If you don't like it, don't participate. If you if you feel that way about it, then that's you know, whatever. If someone's choosing to do that as their you know their career or whatever, and they're doing it, that's fine. I have friends who are strippers and they're paying their way through medical school. Like they are really paying for medical school because they don't have any other options. And you know what? They're doing it. Here's the thing. Too. Like, Maybe some of those strippers are just doing it because they like being the stripper. Here's the, like, and that's cool, man. I'm, it's this their is what, body. What we were talking about uh, on that car ride, it's like we're all literally here because of sex. Why are we stig stigmatizing it, thinking, you know, oh, sure, you shouldn't look at this when you're younger, but I mean, if your parents sit you down and explain to you what it is, and if, if you're a kid, right? So you can explain to them, okay. What you watch, what you see on, on the internet or whatever is usually a glorification of it. It's not going to be quite like that. We're all here because of it. So exactly, most people right? find pleasure through it. And there's a lot of institutions in place that try to limit this. Yes. Like they try to shame, try to shame it. They try to say, oh, you shouldn't, you know, take pleasure in this at all like, because it's a sacred thing. Sure, it's a sacred thing because it, we're all doing it. It, 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 it creates <laughs> life, right? Yeah. If you sit down and talk, just talk to your kids and explain to them... And then like, they're actors. They? Yeah. Exactly. They are. They're they're actors. Actors. They're they're fiction. Acting. They're yeah. Fucking, it's fiction. The yeah. penetration fiction. just happens to be they real. They take the best yeah. of the best of the crop and they, and they put it together. on a set and go... Here you go. That's the best you're ever gonna see. Yeah. Yeah. Even the noises when they're filming, none of that's there. No, it's there. it's, it's yeah. really they go, they over. Do man. the production and they it's put like, all it together. They put the noise. Post. It's yeah. some fifty year old lady in some booth just fuck on it's just some fucking sherry going. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's fucking true that. It's right. an acting. It's a movie. It's Hollywood. Oh yeah, it's yeah, 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 exactly. exaggerated. Yeah. Of it's, course, not every right. woman you go and bang in your life is gonna look like a like a. Porn star. Yeah. You, yeah. You, you, everyone's got their deviations, so. Oh, yeah. So I don't know how we started off on sex working. Okay? <laughs> you got what, a question. What was that? It was, it was, it was, oh, we were it was just like conversation you and Neil were having. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it was just, it was, no, it was my rant. It, okay, yeah. sorry. My rant. Your rant. Yeah. My rant about, is, is about being sex work. Judgmental being judgmental against sex yeah. work and <laughs> sex workers. Sex workers. Okay. Like, it's not something that, it's not something that should be deemed shameful. Right. Like, like. I feel well, like the want and the need for it is so great that how could it be so fucking wrong if yeah. everybody is either watching it secretly, enjoying it, or doing it? Yeah. So why? You so, know what? I don't know. A lot of people that sit there and chime in and say, hey, it's wrong, put their two cents in. 90% of these people are having the same fantasies and shit. Yeah. They're just chiming in because they have this... Or weird thought in their mind that yeah. oh it's yeah. wrong so I have to think this way yeah. but in reality you know they're thinking about it too yeah and the hardest thing that you need the hardest things to discuss are usually these things like for Sarah was saying try talking to my to teenage sons about it and uh yeah you need to yeah. It's probably uncomfortable, and it's probably hard. It's going to be so uncomfortable. Just like anything you need to be honest about yeah. and tell the truth about. It's going to be weird, and maybe it's hard, but you know what? It's the best thing you can possibly do. It's for yourself, for your kids, for your relationships, anything. Yeah. Be straight up. Okay, so that was my rant. So, so yeah. that was the death that was rant. A good one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, guys. Yeah. So that's why <laughs> we went into that. Um, for it, yeah. Did you have an urban word today? I had several, but my phone's being used, oh. so... I had I, I, I had Phyllis. Well, Phyllis is one of my urban words. If any of you guys can chime in and tell us what Phyllis don't is. Don't come in us. Don't come in us. Forget this. Phyllis, but don't drain us. So the one word was Phyllis. I do remember what it means. Anyway. 
No, it relates to the mom situation. Oh. I'm no, not going to chime in because I just looked it up. <laughs> Is it like space docking? <laughs> I hope not. No. Phyllis, Phyllis, uh, Phyllis is um, a Phyllis is a, is a, a a woman, either a mom, a sister, an aunt, a grandmother Phyllis that Phyllis. does absolutely everything possible to make everybody happy. Oh, so people the are just just not even just pleasing. That's the, it's the, it's it's not to the please unicorn. them. It's just to make sure that <laughs> the needs are being met. Maybe well, in Europe. Right? That's a Phyllis. That's uh, what I got from it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. It's, so that's like the opposite of like a Karen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Like Karen's Karen kind of, is just making everyone so a Hey, Karen's just a miserable bitch. Yeah. So the definition <laughs> I have here is a person who is intelligent and extremely empathetic. Always oh, yeah. does for others and puts everyone above their own. And Someone the, who people look to well, as their the therapist in all a great person. So many mamas. It is like the opposite See, of the Karen. Exactly. And I think that most moms are Phyllis's. Yeah. I, I know I'm married to Phyllis. So. <laughs> I'm a Phyllis for show. <laughs> for show. For well, show. So okay, there, there, so was, the there was my Urban Word, one. the mom special edition. And then what were you, what were you saying? Oh, what were they called? Crotch goblins? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, whoa. Crotch, crotch whoa, goblins. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> we went a little blue. A special Purple. name for children is crotch goblins. Crotch gremlins. Did you gremlins? Gremlins. 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 Yeah, gremlins. Did you crotch feed? Gremlins. Did you feed the crotch gremlins this morning, babe? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think you did. Okay, and so crotch we 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 went off on a crazy rant with Duff and the urban word. And so now, what I want everybody to do, if you're participating in the conversation, is first my Shanteisms this week. What I want you guys to do is comment or say the things that you should not say about your children or being a mom, no, but you sure as hell think about. And I'll share mine. I'll share mine. Okay. When our first babies were very little, before they were walking, but they were teething, and we were sleep deprived, and maybe our husbands are working or off, or maybe you're a single mom and you're losing your fucking shit. Have you, have you ever, have you ever thought, I'm going to throw my fucking kid off the porch? Like I just want to put him outside. I just want to put him somewhere and close the fucking door. Because I'm losing shit. Blake it. I want to smother him. I'm going to go ahead and be honest. Be honest, guys, because I shared it with my best friend before and we said it together. I just want to fucking throw him off. The it's kind of like that meme that was oh shared. Oh, my God. It was like, <laughs> ripping my fucking that was like, kids... I can call my kids an assholes because they're unreasonable <laughs> and they're being assholish, and it's the truth. Just because they're my kids does not make them yeah. not an asshole. Right. So, you know. And I know, and all of our loving, amazing moms are just like, we have to understand them. They're toddlers, yeah. they're learning the world. You know, at one, mo at one moment we're holding them, they're not walking, and we have to show them the way. And then Fuck the next, they're, they're trying to figure it out on their own. <laughs> I know, I, yes, I know that. We have to be patient with them. We have to teach them all the things. That's our job as parents. Yeah. Sure. Fuck, man. Sure. There have been sure. times 90, where, like, all of no, all of no, and then she just does the shit right in front of you. And you just want to, like, punch her in the face. 99% of the fucking time, I'm like, I'm going to love you and love you and love you and love you. And then that other 1%, I want to fucking pound your little face in. Because <laughs> we don't, just, because but we're not that people. Don't, because we're not allowed. Come on. Beyond being not allowed. <laughs> well, it's... You know, no, it's just, right. it's just, and it's that, absolutely, there are times where if you you're, feel that. Yeah, if yeah. you're that's a child. Like, that's like, okay, that's like, it's not even with children, that's with people in general. Yeah, I got with people here. in general, I want to fucking pound their fucking faces <laughs> in. All right? Yeah. There are people in front of me in a car that are doing stupid fucking shit in the car in fucking front of me that I want to take a fucking zombie killer and run their fucking asses over and make sure they don't exist anymore because they're fucking stupid. But I don't follow through with that. Because you're not supposed to follow through with it. <laughs> but these are feelings that I have. These are feelings that I have for adults. These are feelings that I have for teenagers. And these are feelings I have for fucking little fucking pipe fucks that are being <laughs> little shitheads. All right. So it here's happens. the thing: if your if your child is safe, say they're in a playpen or they're in a corral or a crib, and they're crying, 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 and you've tried everything you can possibly do. You changed them, you fed them, you did everything you could think of, but you're on your last fucking string and you're gonna lose your shit. Walk away. Go outside. Take a breath. Lock yourself in the garage. I don't know. Go get some air. Calm down and come back to the situation. I've done it several times 
since 2010 when I first became a mom. I got three of them. I've walked away. I've done it. You just make sure your kids are okay, they're safe, occupied, or whatever. Maybe they're screaming their faces off and they look crazy, but don't be the crazy person too. Just walk away. Mark, well, you saying you had a couple? Yeah, I got, I got a few things to say here. Look at where you guys are hogging the mic, the phone. It's in the chat room. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so Jen says, I've kicked my child out of the car. <laughs> I yes. stopped, of course, because the sound of her crying was making me crazy. Mm hmm I was, I was thinking, oh, she kicked her out of a moving car. That's fucking bold. Amanda. Amanda says, I have cracked my son's iPad because he would not listen. Good on you, Amanda. I would have done the same. I probably would have cracked it over his head. But. <laughs> Nicole says, she hasn't felt that extreme, but has felt extremely overwhelmed, but is thankful for a great family support system. That's good, Nicole. Excellent. A lot of people don't have that. A lot of people, a lot of people would need talk about that, and a lot of people don't have any of that, and then you have to you have to physically take yourself out of the situation, you because you have no, any, no one else who can talk you down. Or you physically remove them uh -huh. from their kids while they're beating them. <laughs> physically remove those people. <laughs> See, a support system is good because it's it goes back to that saying, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. And and it's more than just the parents. It's the it's family. the grandmas, the aunties, yeah. the best friends. But on the other token, too, it takes a village to raise an idiot. So just be careful. Okay? <laughs> be careful who you're letting rear your children. I'm, I'm, speaking of idiots, Jen says only husbands get kicked out of moving cars. <laughs> <laughs> so that's for my Shantaeism this week. That's beautiful. Since we're hitting the mom notes, because there's been times where you have thought the craziest thing. Or even just being overprotective. I remember walking on my mom's porch with my baby Layla, thinking, oh my god, what if I fell down these stairs with her in my arms? Jesus, well, Shante. Yeah, those are my weird ass thoughts. Those are Shanteisms. <laughs> that no matter how weird, that's still the weird shit in my head. I don't know if anybody else has those weird fucking neurotic thoughts, but I thought it, like, oh my god. And then, like, have mad anxiety and then go inside where it's safe. <laughs> like, I what myself. the hell? <laughs> you really brought everything down, man. I told you. <laughs> well, I know I'm, I'm all, kidding, all of kidding. these other moms are right there with me, and I know it. Yeah, look, some later posted here. Look, uh, Amanda says, I had postpartum depression. It was bad. I had to get on antidepressants from it because she was young and stressed out and isolated, right? Inexperienced. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a real serious thing. Yeah. Like, whether you think you, you have, you, look, it's not even, like, you don't even, it's just there. Yeah. Whether you believe that it's not there or not, it's just there. It's, it's an actual, real fucking thing. Yeah. You could be happy that day. I'm so totally happy. blissful. Yeah. Great day. Kids are doing great. And then all of a sudden, it's just boom. Fuck. It just yeah. comes out of nowhere. Just fuck. Yeah. 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 You know? And yeah. then just another thing that's similar to that is bipolar disorder. Yeah. yeah. It's like a roller coaster. Yeah. So I'm going to stop us there at the Shanteisms because those are just our crazy thoughts. Because we're going to get deeper into those things and why we have those crazy thoughts, not only as moms, but as people who have children, okay? So do we? are we going to do nerdy stuff? No, I think we can. No? We're going to go right into it? Yeah, I think we're okay, so, so what all your mothers have been waiting for. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so what I want to dip into are the mental health aspects of not only being a mom, guys, because I know we're talking about moms a lot, but as a parent, okay, because there are dads at the table and there are um, uncles who have spent most of most of our children's lives with, you know, with them. So there's contact, full contact, so they get to see it. They know everyone is a part of some child's life and has an opinion on something. But for those moms who have put babies inside their bodies and pushed them out and have cared for them, you guys have all kinds of hormones and chemicals going on. 100% of the time, because of that, that's completely different from people who have not had a child. Yeah. You have, maybe you have had some type of mental health condition or issue prior to, which I did. I was taking Prozac, and then I became, I found out I was pregnant with my daughter, and I stopped cold turkey taking Prozac because I was worried about um, harming her. But what I did to help that situation was I saw a counselor and was getting medical care at a midwifery from day one on. I was seeing a therapist because I was very scared that I would have postpartum depression. And because of my anxiety causing stress, I was worried about um, Layla's health while I was pregnant. So 
if you are on medication or you've had to take medication and all that, what you're doing is you're protecting yourself and you're protecting your child because you care about your quality of your parenting and how you have your household and all of that. There's absolutely no no problem with that, taking medication or seeking help. So Do if you, you make the decision not to take medication, you know, make sure you have backup, make sure you have help because if you are isolated or say, you know, you have kids and you're at home and you're alone because dad's out working hard providing for you and your family or you're a single mom, whatever. Make sure you're doing something. Reach out. Go right. online. There's lots of things like that. You're never right. alone. Yeah. Right. Go. So Sarah said something that really resonated with me. She said, motherhood is a mental illness. It is. Yeah? Absolutely. That, that just blew my mind. <laughs> you're, as, as a mom, finding out you're, you're going to be a mom and not you're like dealing with all this and craziness, like you're completely responsible for this person for the rest of their life, right? The rest of your life. And so I think that it's, you're so obsessed. You're so obsessed. And what I, one of the things I want to talk about is guilt and the stress that we put on ourselves as parents. That comes with kids, full on, because there's all these things, right? Your, your kids are supposed to be progressing at a certain rate. Or there's like all these rules and books and things that the people have put on you, the doctors, other moms, everyone. And you put this weight on yourself. Not only does it cause guilt for you, but it causes guilt like, I don't know, it's just, it's a, it's a weird description, but all I can describe it is, is guilt. I feel like you could put that on other people too, other yes. parents. Yes, when you When you're sitting around, like parents are sitting around and you talk about how amazing your kid is and how much they're progressing and how smart they are and how quickly they're advancing and then this other parent whose kid isn't quite up to that same level but is the same age starts to feel bad about themselves or maybe they feel ashamed of their child yeah. because they're not on that level but the truth is that they all advance differently at different levels in different yeah. ways right yeah. mm -hmm. their milestones are at, at, at a different pace yeah. it's never it's never there's never a unison pace mm -hmm. and that, that's another thing that like that i think that falls under that whole thing is doctors do that they, they tell they tell they, they tell parents do. oh your kid's supposed to be at this milestone mm -hmm. because this is what this is generally i'm like no it's, my kid isn't generally a part of this whole situation absolutely. my general generally my child's going to pace himself at his own pace and whatever that pace fucking may be is what we're going to nurture it's, it's nothing to do with what you believe or what society believes or what my best friends fucking believe or my children should be because that's it yeah. We're not raising them. No. Yeah. I think that also we as parents, we need to think about that. Like, take it on. Like, give yourself a break. Yeah. Take it easy. Yeah. And you know what? And that's another thing, too, is, okay, this was a video. There was a video out there where this, um, I think you, I don't can't remember if it was a little girl or a little boy, but they were just losing their shit. And they were in a grocery store in line. And you know how you feel. I got anxiety having to pay for groceries by myself. And if you were with a kid, losing their shit, and everybody's looking at you, judging you, saying random shit, and you're like, dude, this is my kid, like, I'm trying my best, whatever. What all I could think of, and in the comment section, there was all these moms saying things like, I would have beat their ass, I would have took them out, I would have took them to the bathroom, had a little conversation, and they would have been fixed right up. And you know what that makes me think of? Is all of these moms and all this pressure without considering anything. You don't know. This could this kid could have autism. This kid could be overly stimulated right now and has no way of dealing with this. When I see these things, I have I have friends who have children that have learning difficulties, who have autism, have Asperger's, all these different things. And I think maybe I'm um, maybe just more experienced because I used to work for a center that worked with children with these difficulties. So I have more respect for it. I don't know if it's I just had it early on before I even had kids. So I understand it. But I think that as a mom, as a parent, there's no way. You can't look at other parents and be that, be that way. No. Why can't you be in that line and go, are you okay? Do you need a minute? You know, to the mom. Comforting. Yeah. Something. But it was nothing but comments. Just belittling that mom. And saying how horrible that kid is. What a horrible fucking kid. How, you know, how dare you bring that kid to the store? Right, right. I'm sorry, maybe she's a single mom and this is how she does her <laughs> life. How she does it. And you know what? That's how she does it. Her kid is losing his mind at the grocery store and now she's going to go home after doing all that and unloading groceries and doing and living her life and she's going to do it every day.
You know, yeah. I bet a lot of those comments too were from people who aren't even parents. Right? Yeah, exactly. Who don't know idea how what parents should be. Like, yes, yeah. that's a lot child. of it too. Well, that that I don't know that 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 kind of reminded me of this other video that I was watching the other day, and and it, it was the same situation. There was a little dude, and he was in the front in the cart with his grandpa, and. They're going throughout the store, and this this little dude was just losing his shit, just losing his shit. He'd want something, and the grandpa would be like, "No, you can't have that." Mm -hmm. And he'd like try and grab things off the off the off the uh, shelves, and like, he, he, you know, he'd, he'd stop him from doing all these different things. And this kid would just constantly throw tantrums, and then the grandpa would be like, "All right, Billy, it's okay. All right, Billy, just just calm down. All right, all right, Billy, just count to ten. All right, Billy, just loose up. All right, <laughs> Billy, it's just right now. It's not going to be all day. Yeah. All right, Billy, it's just right now. I'm going to be. I'm going to live through this. It's okay. It's okay. And then in the, you know, and he's standing in line, and his kid's losing his, his shit because he wanted a chocolate bar. And his grandpa was like, "No, you can't have a chocolate bar right now because we have to, you know, do whatever." And then he's like losing his shit again, and his grandpa's just like, "Just breathe. Just breathe, Billy. Just breathe. Just breathe, Billy." And then there's a lady standing behind this old man. And the lady came up to the old man and was like, Hey, you know what? You're doing an awesome job with him. Like, I've been watching you throughout the whole store. And, you, you, you know, your, your grandchild or whoever he is, is just constantly throwing tantrums. And you're you're just losing, your, you know, you're talking to him calmly. And you're talking to him, telling me, you know, the situation. And you're explaining things to him. And the grandpa looked at him and I'm like, I'm not telling this little shit anything, man. I'm trying to calm my fucking ass down. <laughs> right? Yeah. I knew you were getting to that point. Yeah. yeah. It was like straight I'm talking up. Myself. I'm talking to myself. This is self-talk because I'm going to lose my shit otherwise. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it was just like, it was just funny. It was just funny, but it was just like, you know, people's perspective. Yeah. You know, it's, it's when you really you make that realization. That you're like, oh shit, that's me. Right? Right. That's my shit. Uh -huh. Exactly. That's my shit I got to deal with. Right? Exactly. Yeah. You can't, you can't, um, you can't control all the situations, but you can control how you react to them. Yeah, you can control your own business. Yeah. Exactly. Take care of that. Exactly. Don't, don't worry about that kid in the store that's acting up, man. Just control get, your own get situation. Get through your day. So the next thing I want to talk about, besides guilt and obviously patience, is um, loneliness. As um, I remember when my daughter, she, between basically, be, between her being born and her being one year old, I spent a lot of time alone. It was always just me and her. And she just was my person. We were always together. I would literally tell her everything. I'm cooking, we're doing this, singing songs to her while I'm giving her a bath, all day, every day, alone. And nobody should ever spend so much time alone. Not with another adult to speak to, not without friends around. I mean, I have friends that would come help me go grocery shopping and come spend time with me and stuff like that. And those were like hardcore special moments. And um, I have a lot of friends now who are brand new parents or who have a couple small kids at home and they're, the dads work or they're a single parent and they spend a lot of time alone. So here's, here's my thing. Check on your friends who are parents. Have they been outside? Have they eaten? Have they changed their clothes today? Brush their teeth. Right? Have you checked on your new mom? Has she been able to take a shower? There were times where I had to put Pollux in the swing or put something inside the bathroom just so I could take a shower. Because not only is, maybe he's asleep and you can walk away to go take a shower, but your anxiety as a parent is thinking, oh my god, they're in the crib, are they going to die? Yeah. All those things. Especially with people like me who have horrible anxiety. Check on your, per check on your parent, or check on the parents, okay? Check on your turkey? Check on your turkey! Is it good? So check yeah. on your friends because there's new moms out there who have not showered in a week. Right. Okay? They smell gross. Go check on your friends. Yeah. I mean, seriously, straight up, there's been times where I'm like, God, it was so nice just to have a friend and talk to you. Yeah. I remember being alone with the kids for so long that someone would come over and I wouldn't shut up from the time they walked in the door to the time they walked out because it was the first time I had talked to an adult in like four days. And I, that's just it. You, you're secluded, but you're, you know, you're happy and you're loving it, but that's not healthy. You need to be, you need to have some sunshine and be active and talk to other adults. Your own humans. Yes. <laughs> so, that's what I love about today's technology is it's a bit more easier now to be connected with people. Like, 
talking about, you know, feeling lonely and stuff, like, I can't imagine what it would have been like, you know, 20 years ago when you couldn't just pick up, you know, a pocket computer and talk to a friend about whatever is bothering you. Sure, you probably had the phone, but you don't know if they're home or not. And, I mean, social media technologies helped us connect even more. It's also sort of helped us isolate ourselves, but that's yeah. beside the point. I mean, like, it's a tool and, and how you use it. And, I mean, I can't imagine, like, the, 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 the amount of mothers that, you know, what, what the heck they were going through, you know, 20, 30, 50 years ago. Like, we're all just beginning to bring all these, <laughs> like, mental issues to light in the last 5, 10, 15 years. And, like, we're just, you know, beginning to destigmatize a lot of these issues. Yeah. yeah. Well, a lot of everybody, that's another thing, too, guys, is in, that's another thing we also put on ourselves as as parents and the whole role situation. Dad's supposed to go to work and provide for the family, and the mom is supposed to have a nice house and her kids are taken care of. Well, and before, the mom never had any, there was no allowance for that. The mom's not allowed to say, oh my God, I'm so sad and I've had a rough day. Because guess what? You got to be home all day. You got to do all this shit and be at home. What do you have to bitch about? Okay? And the fact of the matter is, raising kids is fucking hard. Okay? Yes. And you're trying to raise a kid and have a clean house and have all the laundry done and put away. And all of these things are supposed to be perfect and right. And dad had a long day. He's tired. Don't talk to him. Just feed him and give him all the things he wants. And that's how it's supposed to be. And that's not how it is. And I mean, obviously, roles have changed and things are different now. Moms work too. And there are these things. And that's different. And everybody's kind of getting in the gear of that. And I was reading this thing where dads spend 80% more time with their children than they did, what, 20 years ago, 30 years ago? 10 years. 10 years ago. Everyone's involved now. So we don't have to put all that shit on ourselves anymore. If you're having a rough day and you don't want to get out of bed because you're fucking exhausted, tell someone. Call someone up. Hey, babe, it's been a rough day. I'm so sorry. I hope you had a good day and all that, but I need a break. I need to get out of this house. You know, all those things. You need to tell someone. And then my, my friend posted the other day that basically she's been alone and she's like, I need a friend. And she spoke out. She, she told everybody on Facebook. I'm like, it's kicking my ass. And she told everybody, and guess what? People showed up. Yeah. So if you're having issues, speak up. Yeah. Tell someone. We're not right. living in the 50s. If you don't know, now you know. Now you know. Ninja. Hey, dude. Yeah. <laughs> dude. That's dude. Good. That's dude. 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 Yo, my dude. And then Monique, Monique just said, she said, not everyone is lucky enough to have a husband or a dad. And that's true. And you know Give what? My number. Some of us didn't pick that. Some of us so. didn't choose that. Sometimes shit fucking happens yeah. where the dad's. Something bad happens, okay? They're and, we, you know, it, this they happens. And I don't like they talking about it because it's real rough because our family had, had that issue happen to us, Christopher's sister. And you know what? She has four young children at home. Uh, well, she has three little children and then one older. But the fact of the matter is she's alone with all these children all the time, and she doesn't have any help. She needs help. And people need to reach out to people like this and be there for these people because... Yeah. It's hard, you guys. It's very hard. And it, inside your body, inside your brain, and your heart, it's all a battle every day. So at the end of the day, we're all supposed to be on the same team. Mm -hmm. yeah. Team human, man. Yeah. Right. Look out for your fellow humans. We're right. freaking Male, raising female, the future. Adult children, yeah. look man. out for each other. Right? Be there. Team meat walker. You don't even have to like each other. But Just you should respect and care about someone yes. else, man, their life. Their if you see someone struggling, be there. Yeah. Heart. Heart. Yeah. Heart. Heart. yeah. And so I, I know I talked about the loneliness and we talked about that. And the other major thing I want to talk about is relationships. And what I mean by that is the dads and the boyfriends and your friends. So when you become a mom, you think, ah, oh, sweet, everyone's super stoked, I'm pregnant, everyone's going to come to my baby shower. Everyone's rocking this shit and about, uh, I would say, maybe four weeks to a month or so after, everyone disappears. Yeah. That's why you're so damn yeah. alone, okay? Um, if you have a husband or a boyfriend that's in the picture that you've had children with, these dads, they feel, um, what is the word, babe? Not useful because you're the mom. 
because you're the breastfeeding mom, right? Yeah. They can't help you. They can't do the things. Or maybe they can do some things, but not all the things, and they foot see you rubs. struggling. Get some foot all these things. There. There's yeah. a lot of stress on relationships when you have kids. Huge, mm. huge stresses. You kind of feel, you kind of feel useless. Like, yeah. I'm not breastfeeding my child, so I don't wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning to breastfeed my child because I can't fucking wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning. Hang off the boat to go. So I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of not being the most nurturing of a fucking human being right mm -hmm. now. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm not the one taking the, the 3 o'clock in the morning, the 4 o'clock in the morning, the 5 o'clock in the morning wake ups because. I don't have tits that produce milk. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, or you know, other things that moms do that, that dads aren't physically capable of doing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I didn't, I didn't, I didn't bear this child. Ten months. That wasn't me. You know what I mean? That wasn't me. That wasn't me going through the change. That wasn't me feeling these emotions. That wasn't me feeling these hormones or surges. That wasn't me becoming a mouth. You know. Um, having the, the, the mental breakdown of being a mom, mm -hmm. right? And like, you know how, how they say the dad doesn't really become a dad until they see the child being born? I'm like, no, that's not true. You know what I mean? Maybe for some. Some people, sure. But yeah, but it's in my particular instance, it didn't feel that way. I felt like a dad as soon as I found out that I was going to be a dad. I also you know think I mean? that has like, to do with connection with the people. Yeah, if yeah. you have that connection with the person who you're having children with, there's a lot. It's a lot yeah. different. Yeah. You know what I mean? And if you and don't have that, maybe it's a relationship thing. Maybe I don't know. And you can't judge anybody falls, from. It still just falls into it. Like, it was just coming back to it. It was just bringing it back to the mm -hmm. whole relationship thing. Like you have to. It's a hard thing. It's a hard thing to maintain a relationship. It was a very difficult thing to maintain a relationship. You know, but uh, like all good things, it's hard work. Yeah. Right. And I don't know anybody else's. It's mostly about communication. Expression. It's mostly about communication. I don't know. I can't really add anything to it because I'm haven't really been an actual father yeah. or figure. At a, I mean, I'm okay. a step parent for a bit, and I mean, I, I can't say that I've that it's really changed me that way, but it's given me like new perspective and new understanding for not only like parenting, but like being a step parent. Right. And it kind of gave me a little bit more of an appreciation because I grew up with a step parent. And then, like I understand now fully like what they actually went through, like what was the mindset, like everything that they were through. That's, a, that's another thing, too. I, I worry about it. I stress that. about it, about um, the fact that I'm a mom and my kids are always going to be the most important thing to me because I know that men feel second best. They always feel second fiddle. They always feel like they don't get enough attention. And when you have kids, it comes in the form of sexual, sexual satisfaction. It comes in the form of intimacy. And it comes in the form of friendship. You feel second fiddle. And I think that's the sacrifice and the patience that comes with becoming a parent, because there needs to be patience there and respect and, you know, trust and all those things, because I know that men don't feel, like, important, you know what I mean? But obviously if someone chose you, chose you to be there and chose you to be a part of the situation, then you are chosen, do you know what I mean, you guys? So there's that. I wanted to speak up on that because I know I have anxiety and stress about it, about how I make Christopher feel as a dad and as a, as a husband, right? And I think that um, a lot of moms, too, they think about all their responsibility with the kids and being a mom and stuff like that. And I think they have stress about it, too. I think all moms do. And we want to make sure everyone's happy. Well, I do. I'm a Phyllis. I want to make sure everyone's taken care of and everyone's happy, but we, and it's all that shit we put on ourselves, on our shoulders. It's so much weight we carry around all the time. Shut up, Karen. <laughs> Does anybody else have anything to say about any of these things, about the guilt or relationships and loneliness? There was uh, one person saying that she thinks that her other half is just not trying, that he just won't put the baby to bed and stuff like that. Again, that's communication. 
Yes. Um, I think so too. You know, some guys aren't go getters. You gotta give them that little push. Yeah. Yeah. And some guys I know. Scared. I know. Ideally, yeah, yeah, some guys are scared. Yeah. Yell at some guys. But right? you know what? Some guys were not raised that way, also, and it needs to be discussed, and it needs to be a situation where you communicate about it. Yeah. Like guys weren't raised to take care of kids and take care of babies and handle those things. I have a friend who didn't know how to fucking load the dishwasher until he was a grown ass man in his twenties. Okay, there's moms who do it all and take care of everything for these men and these boys and they don't know these things. Okay, and then they become dads and they're they're still the same person, you know, but if you want those things you have to communicate them. You were saying Malcolm sorry, you were saying Malcolm? Yeah, I think about relationships. Uh, oh, I, I don't know if I should. I don't know. I, well, I want to say this. I mean it in the most respectful way possible. Coming from a uh, single man heading into his 40s. But mm, most of the age appropriate women for me are mothers now. Of course. Right? Single mothers. Right? And I'm learning, I've been learning the last couple of years that, uh, that it's, it's not the same as. Um, for a man dating in his 20s, meeting single women that aren't mothers, right? It changed. The game changed, right? You're not meeting just her anymore. You're not getting into a relationship with just her anymore. You're getting into a relationship with her children, too. Yeah. Right? You, uh, you got to learn to be patient and respectful and, and understand that you are going to be second or third fiddle. To, to the kids. The kids are her life, her first and foremost, right? And then her job, her career, right? If she's, if she's working. So you gotta kind of be there and respect that, right? Don't, don't get resentful. Don't feel left out or, or that you're not important because, I mean, if she is with you, obviously she did choose you, just like you said, right? Yeah. yeah. She didn't. She didn't pick you just to be there, right? She wants you there. She yeah. just needs you to understand and respect that she has this life already that you're coming into, yeah. right? I mean, you are inviting her into your life as well, but hers is a little more complex. There's more to it, right? She's got other lives that she has to care for, yeah. and you need to understand that. And that's <clears throat> that's where I'm at right now as a man who has dated single mothers in the past where I didn't quite understand that yet and I would I, would, I don't know if I would say I felt resentful or, or just kind of like left out or, or you know not fully appreciated I guess I think and that's that's my own shit right if I may finish that's my own shit that's my own thing that I got to deal with for myself to, to try to better myself is to understand that and that's where I'm at right now. That's what I'm coming to terms with is, is that dynamic, right? It's not just a single mother with kids. There's so, so much more to it that I need to understand, right? I need to be respectful of that. I need to, 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 to go into her world and try to make myself, I don't know, uh, useful, like helpful, right? To accommodate, to, to respect everything, not just her, you know? Like I said before, I'm not just getting into a relationship with her, I'm getting into a relationship with her children. And and I always make it a point when I'm talking to her about anything or complimenting her or anything, I include the kids too. Always. Always. Mm -hmm. I, and that's the biggest that's another another problem with me too is is <clears throat> coming out of the relationship if it doesn't work out. Yeah. Is that I've, I've, I didn't just fall in love with her, like I fell in love with the kids too, right? So yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a lot more heartbreak than just getting in a relationship with the person. Yeah. You lose the kids too. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. And I don't know if anything I said was inappropriate or stepping right. on anyone's no. toes, but that's just from my perspective as a no, single man. No, it's absolutely man. correct, and it's good but, to have all these different points. I mean, I have, I have two adopted kids, but they're grown-ups. They're adults now, right? Yeah. So, yeah. And that's the thing, think, though, too, is I, if, if the other women, the other moms are hearing these different perspectives, maybe it'll give them a better understanding of what's going on out there, yeah. you know? And I think I think us talking about it like this, like you talking about how you feel about that, I mean, it's perfectly honest, good feelings. These are feelings you should, I mean, if you, you're, you're, you're stuffing those feelings away, it's not a good thing. So, I mean, feeling these things are fine. You know, feeling, feeling, like I feel that with Shante, and I've been with Shante forever. You know what I mean? I, I went into this being understanding that I was going to be stepping into a stepdad role if it's going to go that direction. I knew that. 
I walk into those situations and being an instant daddy. You know what? And I had to understand that, okay, I'm going to have to, you know, yes, my feelings are going to get hurt at certain points. My ideas are not going to be hurt. My ideas aren't going to be, you know, they're not going to be, they're not going to be, be able to be fully developed because I'm stepping into an entirely created life already. Yeah. Right? I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm including myself in that life. I'm not just, it's not just two people. Yeah. It's a little family that's already been created that I'm going to be included into. Yeah. And if I'm accepted into that, then that's great. But the feelings that you're feeling are perfectly fucking fine feelings. Yeah. You feeling left out, or you feeling second fiddle, you feeling third fiddle, you feeling last fiddle in the <laughs> fucking pot. Yeah. Amongst all the other fucking fiddles that are being fucking played and taken care of, that's perfectly fine to feel this way. You know what I mean? But understanding that it too shall pass. <laughs> I just add to that too is I got a godson too. Yeah. yeah. A couple guys, a couple guys sons. Exactly. Uh, the women are like and a godson. Yeah, I I I that's, that's supported me getting old and coming off this medication, man. Is 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 I got, yeah. my mind is really blurry and, and I don't think about everything as it comes. You wanna you know, say just, anything? Are you feeling are you it? Back? Are you feeling all feelings? Yeah. You guys pretty much covered ninety nine percent of it. Mm -hmm. I, I think what we haven't really touched a lot of is when the kids are a bit older. That's what I was thinking yeah. right now. And because you've done the kid young, I want to know about you. And you know what? It, it does it does make it harder. And everything you said is true. And it takes a lot of work and time to connect and work with the child as well, especially when they're older, because it's always been him and her yeah that's it that's all he knows and then you're coming in and he's no longer the man of the house and so he's gonna feel that kind of pack rivalry where he's going to be like no you can't tell me what to do i'm gonna help you you know what i mean yeah. so it, it is it, it's also a lot of it's, it's a lot of work, and I think it's actually more work connecting with the child than it is connecting with the mother, because you've got to spend a lot of time with them. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. And, you know, after after all that time and work is spent, they do notice that after a while, and they do come to respect it. Oh, yeah. It does come to terms. I've, 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 been, I've been Layla's, what, in Layla's life since she was 18 months. Yeah. Yeah. And only as of last year. As she started calling stepdad. Yeah. yeah. She tells so, everyone she has stepdad. Yeah. And that uh, only until last year. Before that I was known as Christopher. Yeah. I was that's it. Christopher. I mean, she still calls him Chris, but when she refers to him to other people, it's that's my stepdad. Yeah. And she tells everybody, I have two moms yeah. and two dads. Yeah. yeah. So that's 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 that dynamic that's changed. So that it's, it, it, I've been there since since she's been eighteen eighteen months old. And she's, she's, what, nine? Yeah. Right? Yeah, she'll be ten this year. So, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, and it's, it is, it's, it's harder, it's harder work, but it's so much worth it. It's very rewarding, yeah. It's very rewarding. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and, you know, Malcolm hit on a point there where when a relationship is over and when you're with a mom, the relationship that you created with their children yeah. is probably a stronger bond than with the mom at the end. So it hurts. Yeah. Double, triple, quadruple, however much. Oh, with my lack of experience, I can't speak for the kids themselves, how they feel if they got attached or anything, but for myself personally, I did, yeah. And losing the woman in a relationship is heartbreaking, right? Everyone's been through heartbreak and lost relationship, but lo and then losing kids too. I mean, and, like they're not yours, but you lost them. You're not going to see them again they because they are because you're not going to yeah. see her again, and by proxy, you're not going to see them again, and they're not going to see you again. Yeah. And it's it's like I've fallen in love with so many women's children that I was with, and, and then you just lose them and you don't see them anymore, right? Yeah. And then it went through a period where I would just not invest after a while. Like, I just, before giving up dating altogether, I would just be like, I'm not even going to try to get to know this kid, man. Like, what, what's going to happen if, if I get kicked to the curb again? Yeah, so, yeah. I lose him. Yeah. 
and, and that's, that's again that's my stuff like i gotta deal with that i can't i can't go through life like that you know yeah you, you gotta adapt and change and this is one of those important things i gotta learn to do as a person getting older in this world. that's another thing too from a woman's point of view is um as a as a mom you're told to like don't bring anybody around your kids because of that, because you don't know what it's going to be, if it's going to last, because you don't want your kid connecting with somebody and then they're gone. You know, maybe they like them and they get along real well, but you don't. You don't want to do that. You don't want to, you know, throw your kid around a situation in and out, in and out all the time, which I totally get and I respect that whole, like, completely. And with um, with me and Christopher, Layla um, only knew Chris as another person. It's, a, it's been always been her dad or Christopher. And so um, there was never any pressure there, but I got lucky, I feel like, because not everybody gets lucky. Women try. We want to have a father figure, or we want to have somebody in our lives that we love, too, or whatever. You want to try? When Chris came along, I was jaded as fuck, and I was not going to be in a relationship or be in one. I was fine with just being me and Layla. So it takes a lot for people to turn down their walls and, like, have respect and yeah. patience and confidence and yeah. trust in another person. It's hard. There's like all these rules and judgments as a single mom or somebody who doesn't have somebody around to do the right thing and not have all these things. And uh, I think as parents, we just really need to just be better at, with each other. Patient and stop being so fucking judgmental. Yeah, and we need time with each other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. with, away from kids. Yeah. Beyond this fucking podcast. <laughs> I know, we don't do <laughs> anything. Like, I think it was the last time we first went on a date. I don't even know how long it was before we had that date. Then we ever had, like left the house together. I'm like, look at us, we're out in normal people clothes, being normal people. <laughs> That's so the thing, so make time for your relationships. Yeah. If you can, go have make a date. Go out together without yeah. friends, without partying, you without still kids. Have date dates. Yeah, yeah, go out Whatever together, be meeting. friends. Yeah. Or be a, be a couple with another couple. Or right? something, but go out go and out. be yourself with this person. Don't lose yourself completely. It's very yeah. hard to, yeah. you know, not to get stuck in a rut like that. Because Chris and I have done yeah. that. We're like, we haven't gone anywhere in a year. Yeah. We haven't done shit. We haven't yeah. left the house without kids. It can easily happen, especially when you're working so long. You know, you work a lot, and you're in, you know, your schedule. It happens, but you got to make time for your, your relationship with your significant other. You know, not just. Your or with kids. your fucking self. Yeah. yeah. That was a mom's go. Zero said. Yeah. said well, you know, you mom say, needs uh, at least uh, maybe one. Yeah. At least maybe one night out a month, yeah. just to themselves. Yeah, yeah. you know, That's there's that. Parents, you need, you know, you need your your break, break. For, for a night, a date night, whatever it is, going out, hanging out at home, just chilling, watching. I think I struggle with kids. that because the only time I ever leave where I'm not with Christopher and the kids is when I'm working. So if I'm teaching a class with something, I'm like, this is my time, and everyone's like, it's still not your time, Shante, because mm -hmm. you're working. It doesn't matter that you're not with the kids and you're doing something that you love. You're still working. You're doing something. You're not hanging out doing something else, you know. So you have to do that. You definitely have to make time for yourself. Getting back, uh, getting back to the whole relationship thing. Sarah posted. <clears throat> she said that's such a real fear. Right. I almost feel like if her husband and her got divorced that she would feel unwanted. Hell got, yeah. She said three kids is a lot of baggage. And speaking from... Again, and we are other... three chickens. We don't look like sixteen-year-old girls anymore. Yeah, speaking, Shit. speaking from somebody <laughs> on the other side of the fence, uh, the right man, the real man, isn't going to see it that way. No. He's not going to look at it as baggage or in a negative light, right? You know, for him, it's it's it'll be like a bonus, you know, like having that much extra to love. You know, you got kids, yeah, right on. We'll take that. We'll love that. Right? Honestly, a real man, if they want you, they will be there for you. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. And if you have children, yeah, or happen you. to have more than one child, that's you. Then you'll end up being there for them too. Yeah. Because exactly. you love that's them. That's, 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 yeah. Yeah. that's a family. That's not just a woman you're getting into a relationship with, that's a family. Yeah. Right? And you wanna you wanna take all that in and be a part of that. Yeah. Malcolm yeah. is single lady, so if you're looking for a nice man yeah. to help you with your family, he's here for you. <laughs> if anything, it'll actually kinda I mean, help you know. <laughs> I guess he's not leaving because I bad, said that he has to go pee. It'll, it'll, it'll <laughs> weed out, you know, the bad people. Well, not the bad people, but the incompatible people. Yes. Yeah, because there are well, people it. out there who are just like, where it's a deal breaker. Sure, fine, it's a deal breaker for them. But the, like you guys said, the right person, it's not going to matter to them. No, it's just more. Yeah, like we already said, it's just more <laughs> to love. 
Sarah said she's moving to Canada. Right. She it's said, cold. buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> buckle up. It's cold here. It's fucking Bundle cold, up. guys. Dress warm. Bring your fucking snowshoes. Yeah. Well, so now, you can get to the front door. <laughs> wait, you're going to love it, though, especially where we live, right here. Bring uh, a parka. Yeah. Say parkour. Cool. Get that parkour. <laughs> parka. I'm okay. just kidding. Come to Canada. We want all of you here. I think you guys should talk a little bit about toxicity as well. Mm-hmm. And how, you know, that should not be around the child. To oh, as far as like affect, fighting know, as and stuff as, like that. Yeah, toxicity. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right, yeah. toxic feed like the plant. Infecting the child. Um, you or know, even putting down the par- one of their parents in front of them because oh, the kid, exactly. Yes. The we kid don't know yeah, that's, one, that's one big thing that we don't ever and will never do. That's an amazing, amazing days. one. Is yeah. um, the mom and dad battle. Mom said yes, dad said no, and you not belittle the other parent in front of the children. If you have an issue with the situation, you take it behind doors or take it aside or wait till it's a better time because you cannot or step mess. Mom or step yeah, down. you don't take the wind out of someone else's sails. The yeah, kids are watching. Yeah, they're learning. The kids are they're always learning. watching. They're learning. And, and you know, they're soaking it up. They're taking these traits and they're going to build future relationships on and, these things. And the kids are about kids. They're about themselves. They, they, they haven't learned any of these things that adults have learned. Right, mm-hmm. so they want what they want for themselves. Right, they're selfish. So they're gonna, they're, they're, they're manipulative, little mm-hmm. selfish, little you know. They're cute, and they can be selfless and selfless a lot. But when they want something, they want it. So they're gonna try and figure out how to get it. Yeah, because yeah, they don't understand that they may or may not be able to have it. Exactly, and they don't understand why and why not. Exactly. Or that's another thing too is you have a difference of opinion on how this situation should be parented. Yep. Maybe you think that this is okay and this is good, but you were raised differently and you think, or you know, they think, this is this is not good, I would never do this with my kid or whatever, then have that conversation. Yes. But you need to quit whatever's <laughs> happening and have that conversation elsewhere. You don't have it out in front of your kid. You'd be like, you know what, your kid, you can take a minute, hold up, you know, go do something we're going to have an adult conversation or whatever. We're going to have adult time right now and we need to go talk. You go do this or whatever and fix the situation before it's a yelling match in front of your child or whatever it you know, ends up being. Yeah. You don't want that. And then the whole thing too, like calling names and stuff like that. Like we don't call each other's names. We don't do that. You know, we joke around and stuff like that, but there's never a time where I'm like, you know, you're you're a piece of shit or whatever and why don't you ever take out the fucking trash or we know we never say we never go you never do this or you never do that because it's not true you do these things and you do that you forgot to do it this time or whatever those are belittling things that you use against someone else in a a fight and maybe you don't even you don't need you don't mean it it's just happening and you feel bad later but all of it's happening with these little eyes that are right there learning how to treat others in relationships they take this into their friendships they take these into school and they take it into future relationships but the good news is that if you do do that kind of stuff you can undo it too right you talk to your kid and explain to them hey i did i messed up and i said this to your mom and i didn't mean it and you should never say that and to your wife apologizing is a big huge thing and a lot of the time if you're parenting a child and you have someone come in whether it's a stepfather a stepmother um, grandparents or or even grandparents mm-hmm. as well they come in and they see you talk to that one or that group of people in that fashion they will do the same thing yes mm-hmm. lead by example cuz like i I've, I've actually had it happen once or twice and word for word exactly what the other person said so you know like they are listening always yeah uh, always yeah always listening yeah uh, so, uh one of the one of our listeners said if the parents are separated no matter what don't talk don't bad talk the other parent in no. front of the children ever. do because you know do you know why we don't do that either because it hurts the child yeah. the child is now having to choose between the people that yeah. they love mm-hmm. so don't ever make your child feel like, that they have to choose or that their opinion is wrong too yeah. you know and you're you're putting your child in that that torn situation and that's just horrible i know i was a kid in that situation feeling torn and broken and i had to choose 
and it's all your feelings are wrong and this person is this this horrible person and back and forth and all you're doing is you're hurting the children or, yeah i mean like i've been in that situation too before where like it's like oh they're, they're saying that about that one parent well i'm half of them i guess i'm half I'm, I'm bad too. Yeah. I guess I'm an asshole, and right? That's that's like one thing that like kids won't understand if you're saying it in front of them. You, you're not you're not processing their, their their thought process. You don't know what they're thinking in that moment when you're saying that in mm -hmm. front of them. And if you say that enough, then they'll think it's normal to be like, oh, I guess I'm half this because my one parent says this about the other, yeah. and I'm half of each. You didn't have to throw it on the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Just yeah, yeah. Um, something to add. Uh, another thing is about choice. Mm -hmm. um, as a kid who has been through this, and save your, hold your judgments. Uh, my parents split up several times when I was growing up, and uh, they would sit me down, me and my sister, and they would ask us, who do you want to stay with? Who do you want to live with? Yeah. Your mom and I, your dad and I are splitting up, right? Who do you want to stay with? And I would always just sit there and be like, I just want you both to be together. Yeah. Just stay together, right? And as bad as that is, that they did that, that they sat me down to, to ask me that, I feel like as an adult looking back on that, it's helped me to try to be more diplomatic towards situations, right? To try to find an amicable sort of solution to a problem between two or more people to try to bring the peace, to right. try to solve it, right? To, to, to make sure that everybody leaves happy. Mm -hmm. And I always look back to that when I was a little kid trying to hold my parents together, right? When it would split up. And that's what I, I feel like that's something I'm carrying with me that, keep, that I keep trying to do. That's another thing too, is be careful what you say because your kids are sponges. Yeah. You don't know what they're taking away. And that when they're not with you, the voice that you use in front of them is the voice they take with them in their head. So if they're doing something, they have your voice in their head, whatever's happening, yeah. in their future relationships, and all these different things. Because we're always looking up to our parents, right? We yeah. want their approval and all those things. Yeah. And our kids are taking away from everything that we do. I didn't my parents' defense. They were young. They didn't, they didn't know what they were doing. To, to, to sit down and ask no your kids that. No parents right? yeah. know what they're yeah. doing. Yeah. And it was different back then <laughs> for our parents, too. Exactly. They didn't, like they didn't have not like support groups or there was no manuals or anything like that, right? No internet. I think there's no, there's no, yeah, there's no. Support. There's different times too. Yeah, different think, mindset, different, yeah. different culture. And there, there's lots of books, right? Self help books and parenting books, but those are also written at the perspective or ideas of someone else. Doctor. You know, or maybe, yeah, or maybe other moms that have these different standards of how things are supposed to be. But the problem is, is all kids are different, and yeah, we're and all different people, and there's, there's no one there's no way, better rule. way. There's, you know, there's all different ways of doing that. Yeah. And, and, I'm not, and I'm not even saying that that's a bad way either, right? Like, that's that's also putting on your, you, you know, that's a shitty thing. Like, it, right now, as you look at it, you may think of it as a shitty thing for them. But, no. You could be like, okay, well, who do you want to live with? Oh, you want to lose your mom? Okay, cool. Yeah. Yeah, it See, could have been there too, you right? Know. You know, I didn't know how yeah. it would yeah. react. I was yeah. scared. I was you like, were. I want to piss yeah. off the other yeah. one. Exactly. Yeah. So how about if we just all stay together? Stay together. So it was a traumatic thing for you, but maybe, maybe because of them being the parents at that age, maybe they thought that by doing that, they were being good, like giving you a decision. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. who knows, right? Because some maybe people, when they some were people younger, might they say didn't with, have that. Yeah, some people might say it with malice in their hearts. Yeah. You know, I'd rather have you. But I would yeah. yeah. really hope you pick me. Right. 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 And it, it, you just can't judge it. And there's like one kid's freaking out and being crazy. We don't know why. We don't know who they are. We don't know what's going on in their brain and stuff like that. And there's other moms over here saying this shit's crazy and telling you you're a bad mom. Yeah. You guys, we none of us know what we're doing. We're just trying our best. <laughs> do the best just do best it. things we can. We're trying to create we're trying to create creatures in this world that are yeah. loving and caring. We're trying and to it's... grow other humans by also growing ourselves <laughs> exactly. too. Like, like we're all trying, trying to, to fix, to we're trying to fix be wounds, better. wounds and battle scars and things that have been happening to us and our existence too. So we're you know, it's it's all it's all trial and error. Mm -hmm. It's all just doing your best. Trying to do your best. Just doing your best. Yeah. Exactly. And learn as you go yeah and as yeah. a part of doing your best and a part of learning is reaching out is communication 
is asking for help and being there for each other. So as grown-ups, as adults, let's do that. Let's communicate. Let's respect each other's growth and process and journey and just be there for each other and ask for help. That is the huge points I wanted to make on today's podcast. So you guys all walk away with this going, fuck, yeah, we all are that way. We're all a little crazy. Sometimes we do want to throw our kids off a porch. Sometimes we're thinking that we might drop our kid off a porch, but why would we think that? Maybe you're like me. I don't know, but that's what I'm thinking sometimes. So what I wanted to do too is um, there's a lot of different websites and um, different outlets for women if you need help, mental health help if you need different resources. Say some you're having issues with employment or housing or food or childcare or anything like that. If you're in Canada, if you're in the States, um, I would like it if any of you guys, I know I'm friends with nurses, I know I'm friends with people who work for the county or the province, if you're in Canada. I know that all of you guys have these different things. If you could do me a huge favor and share those links and phone numbers, I would like to add them to the, um, the website under the podcast. So if you need access to different things, I would like to add these links. I have links written down, but I feel like there's no real use of saying them out loud because you're not going to remember them and I'm not going to either. So what I'll do is I'll add them along with the, this, um, at this podcast that was recorded today. So we'll go through the episode, get it all up for you guys. And the links will be there. So if you guys could share what you guys know and have, I would love to add them to what I have. Yeah. So on top of all that, yeah. We'll share, we'll, we'll put them on the Facebook page and we'll put them in the YouTube video as well in the description. Yeah. 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 So we'll, that's. We'll try to cover all the bases. Yeah. yeah. Because it's, it's not all just mental health. There's some, there's moms out there that are struggling and you know what would help them feel better inside their hearts and inside their minds and feel like a better provider is if they were able to get a place for their kids to live. Yeah. If they if they could get their kids shoes, they would feel like a better mom, you know. There's stuff out there where it's just little things like that where they feel bad in their hearts. So check on your families, share the resources, and do the things, guys. So yeah, moms, I love you. We're here yeah. for you. We love you, moms. We love you. Love you. Love you. Good job. That's You're that. doing yes. good. Keep it up. You're, You're not, not alone, alone guys. You're not alone. That's right. That's You're right. right. You're not, not alone. alone. Everybody. Keep your head up. Keep your head up. You're not alone. It's only for today. It's, it's only, only for, for today. Minutes. That's right. It's Even only five if you're trying to get through day to day. You know what we always say, if today doesn't work out, you get to go to bed to, tonight and wake up tomorrow and try again. Let's try again. Sleep yeah. on it. That's right. All right, guys. That's All right. that. All right, guys. Um, well, this has been a, a lovely, special mommy edition, mom's edition. Thank you guys edition. for participating. Thank it's you been for a really amazing, input. It was amazing. an amazing conversation. It was a great conversation too. out there in the chat room. We're <laughs> sorry that we couldn't get to all your comments and questions. We try to tackle as much as we could and, uh, yeah, keep tuning in. Please keep tuning in. All right. Yeah, yeah. Peace. Oh, hey, wait a second. What? 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 We got, we got what? a contest or something? Oh, no. no, yes, we oh, do. Yeah. We have a contest. We're just, we're just totally jumping out of the, the water here and <laughs> running for it, eh? Yeah, we so have we stuff. Stickers. We have stuff. You guys want stickers? You, want you guys stickers? want shirts? Of course you want stickers. Shirts. Uh, we're selling shirts. We're always selling shirts, so we'll chime in and <laughs> shoot us a message and let and us know. And you guys, when we, we sell, we when we sell yeah, merchandise... We, we need it. When we sell merchandise and we sell these things and you guys do this, not only does it help our participation and it helps our reach with things, but when we sell shirts, it goes to better things. So like better sound, right. you know, you know, better yeah. place to be. Right. We want to be, and we're starting a network of podcasts Ooh, for different right. subjects we didn't bring this up to yet. help Sorry, with Start everyone. With so F this is, yeah, we're nerds and we're doing our thing, but it's mostly mental health and um, we do it together because we're all best friends that want to help other people. Um, but there's but, different things. So um, the podcast network, F this network, is starting a series of podcasts. Yeah. We want to do all the things that we like to do, and we all have something that we're good and special at. So, if you guys want to go around and talk about one. Sure. Okay. 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 So, we sat around the other night, and we decided that we're going to start five more podcasts yeah. on top of the existing ones we do have, which Say is what? F This, which you're currently watching. Um, <laughs> uh, earlier today, you heard uh, Axe up. up for the Battle Axe Warriors, or Battle Axe Global, sorry. 
And uh, we have we have another podcast. It's kind of been on hiatus, yeah, indefinite hiatus right now. It's called Left of Good, mm-hmm. which we're not completely doing away with. We're going to bring it back once in a while and do little one-offs here and there. And we got uh, five more brand new, very interesting uh, podcasts that deal with a lot of different topics. And one of them is uh, your guys' podcast, you yeah. and Shantae's. Yeah, Shantae. So it's going to be called Numcast. Be. That's right. And what we're going to be doing is uh, we're going to meet up with our fellow prostitutes and we're going to talk about things about baking, about decorating, about customers, about lots of stuff. But the culinary. Yeah. Can I just world. interrupt for a quick Go. sec? This is really awesome. I just read this. Okay, go ahead. Uh, Amanda said, let's make a mom podcast with just all moms. Oh, yeah. well, do you think you could spike? Do you think you could ta- take that? Obviously, take that and run with it? Yeah. look at all the moms that came to the table yeah. tonight for us. That's right. That's amazing. That's we awesome all idea. have fucking crazy ass brains. We yeah. could get it. So we'll definitely look into that. We'll get, yes. we'll get a podcast one for the mothers out yeah. there. Yeah. All right. So that's me cool. and Chris are doing Numcast, and that's that. going to be about our cakes. Obviously, we run Num Nums, and we're total cake freaks, and there's a whole cake world out there. And so I know that there's a lot of other cake um, enthusiasts in our area and online. And, um, it's something that we are passionate about. Yes. yes. I will be doing a nerdified podcast. So uh, I have a lot of nerdy interests and I have a lot of friends who have similar interests. And we're just going to get together and talk about all things nerdy, whether it's uh, anime, video games, uh, movies, um, maybe other types of games like Magic the Gathering. I know I have a ton of friends who are into that. I have a lot of friends who are into a- anime. We, 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 when, when I get together with them, we talk uh, hours on end about these shows, about these games that we do. So um, why not record it and have some fun? Hang out and have fun with your friends? Right. It, it won't be live like this. We'll pre-record it and then release it. Yeah. Uh, if you're in the Terrace area and want to um, get in touch with being on the show, you can get a hold of me on my Facebook there or email me at nmorgan at gmail.com. Or just hit up uh, at this. Or, or we yeah. hit up at this. At this, yeah. 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 Hit us up on Facebook. We are, all of us. we are the flagship, so we'll hit this up and then we can always relay the messages. The other one that we're going to do is called um, F and Muggles. So it will be a <laughs> Harry Potter podcast. F and Muggles. F and Muggles. Which is going to be entirely, entirely about Harry, Harry Potter and the Harry Potter world. Yeah. Who's, who's, so, host, who's hosting this? Let's get that. Okay. So who's going to be hosting this is going to be uh, myself, uh, Chante, and Neil, with the occasional hookeroo Maybe sitting over them. here. Malcolm, but this guy over here, too. Like the, guys, guys, the guy with no face. Say everybody at this table here, it's safe to say that you're all big, big fans fan of Harry, Harry Potter. Potter. So people are, people are going to... People are gonna come in and show up and and. We're gonna talk about magic. I, say, I am too, magic. but I'm just a little more casual We're just huge and not as knowledgeable. Nerds. We can't even yeah. stop. We just it's always about Harry Potter. Right? I, we oh, watch. We watch. I swear to God. So what kind of stuff are you guys gonna do on that podcast? Well, I don't know. We're gonna, we're so gonna, you guys are gonna talk about. I just can't kill it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you do a little watch along. You'll see. You'll see. Yeah. Yes. We're gonna talk about the creatures. We're gonna talk about the spells. We're gonna talk about the food. What we're gonna do is we want to do. We want to hear a comparison. Right into the meat and potatoes of it. We want to do a comparison from the books to the movies. Yeah. We want to, we want to, you know, do deep, deep dives in these books and, you know, what directions they went with these books and back history of these books and, and so on and so forth. There's an entire Harry Potter world out there that most of the public does not know or see. Yeah. But we're going to bring it. Oh, wow. Nice. I like that. That's yeah. exciting. I look forward to popping in once in a while and putting my two cents It'll in. be fun. Yeah. yeah. So. Okay. So uh, before I get to the other two podcasts I'm going to drop, uh, Sarah called it. She said, I'll join MomCast. Everyone's May, in. Doesn't that sound like such an appropriate Mom name, cast? too? Uh-huh. Yeah. we got to see if the name's not taken. We'll figure yeah, it out. for sure. Okay, so <laughs> the other two podcasts, okay, one of them is, is going to be, uh, it's going to be called The Punk Show. Yes. And uh, we'll, be, we'll be sitting down, we'll be Duff, myself, and one of our friends, Northern Norm, Northern Norm who's That's right. a very active member in the punk culture and circuit right now still he's he's right in there he's balls deep in that stuff so we're going to sit down and we're going to talk about punk subculture and not just punk rock music but we're going to talk about any kind of subculture any kind of anti-establishment type stuff 
the origins of punk rock and where it's at today and everything yeah. like that. All this in between. We're going to listen to songs. We're going to pick our favorite songs. We're going to talk about it all. Past experiences at punk shows. Right. We're gonna Even the fashion. We'll yeah. talk about the fucking clothes, too, and the hairstyles and all that good stuff, right? That's right. All right. So that's the punk show with uh, Doff, Malcolm, and uh, Northern North. Northern North. And uh, the next podcast is called Bury the Needle, and it's going to take place right here in Divine Inc., and it's going to be hosted by Divine Inc.'s artists. Yeah. So there's, and there's, guest artists. Yeah, It'll be all about artists. the tattoo shop and yeah. what's going down in their lives in yeah. here. And not just like not just what's going down here, but they're going to talk about everything art, you yes. know, the history of tattooing, all that good stuff that you don't know and you, you're too lazy to look up yourself. They're going to talk about that shit. So hang around for that. Bury the needle with Divine Ink. That's right. Yeah. Did we cover them all? Uh, I think so. I think Let me we did check it. here. Yeah, I think we did. Yeah, we did. So if there's a, you know if there's stuff that you're into and you want to talk about it and hang out, we have all these different you know, areas of specialties, I guess. So that's where we're at. So F, this is going to start an F and network. <laughs> so that's what's so, going on with us. And then we'll, let's bring it back to what we were talking about in the very beginning, which was our contest. Yeah. So yeah. we, we uh, the last podcast that we had, we, we introduced some of our um, guilty pleasures, uh, which involves music. Guilty pleasure songs. Guess the guilty, guilty pleasure, pleasure songs. songs. For your, right? The songs right. you ears listen ears to that you probably wouldn't tell your friends your, about. Your ears only. Your ears only. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. So what we want you guys to do is to part, partake. Join us. Tell us your guilty pleasures. And uh, when you tell us, either through comment or message or email or smoke fucking signal, we don't care, uh, your name will be entered into a draw. Draw. Four, four some special playing cards. I didn't. I forgot. Oh, to bring bring them. Them. I forgot we should them. bring them. Oh. We showed them last episode. Actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we showed them cards last, last episode. episode. So, so you can go back to the, the last video episode. You can check out the playing cards. I held them up to the camera. And yeah, so. they're they're pretty badass. Yeah. And you also get some stickers as usual. Yeah. You know, there's going to be you know first place and then probably a runner up. Yeah. Uh, so uh, oh, there was another podcast that I forgot to write down just because I wanted to uh, confirm with Oliver if he was interested in doing it, which I did, which he is interested in. Didn't really have a title for it, but uh, tentatively we'll call it Ollie and Malcolm Save the World. And the basically the two of us are going to sit down at a table and we're going to come up with a problem that episode and we're going to try to solve it. We're going to solve that problem, good or bad outcome, we're going to solve that problem. And that's going to be the premise of the episode. Yeah, it's going to be primarily all over because he's got all kinds of crazy, whacked out ideas. And he's all the moms yeah. listening right now are like, yeah, well, we know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're already aware. <laughs> so that's going to be a good, episode, a good podcast if we can do it. So you guys, uh, message, comment in uh, with your guilty pleasures for a chance to win. Cool, but at this merch. For years or only. Yeah. For years only. For so years and um, all of you guys were asking too. How do we know when you're gonna have another podcast? And what do you follow us? Go on yes. the page, follow right. us. Right follow now, us. I think we have two followers, but we have lots of people who like us. Yeah. So yeah. go follow, follow us, us. Follow us and get on all our stuff, and then we'll not only will it be a lot better for us on uh, as far as our uh, appearance, you know, in social media. But you'll get to see and follow and uh, find out what's going on and what's happening next. We tend to we tend to be at least a week before we go on our show to advertise for that, that podcast. Yeah. yeah, we'll figure so, out the date and then we'll hit it up from the F this account. Uh, yeah. We'll give you the lowdown on the dates and such and whatnot. Because all that good stuff. Um, yeah. So that's that, guys. Follow, so, like, share. Oh, yeah, that's right. Do it. Follow, like, like it. share. Follow, share. Friend, like, share. Uh, we, we did Tell like your friends. Button. Put stickers on shit. We did get to do a photo shoot today, so we're going to share some of the pictures later. They're yeah. great, too. Yeah. They're great. We stood out in the cold for you folks. That's right. It was great. It's so great. All right, so this was a lovely fucking mom episode of uh, F This, and I'm Duff. Shante. Swanili. Malcolm. And Thumper. All right, folks. Have a good one. Be yeah, excellent yeah. to each other. Be Stay warm. Stay warm. Shut that beat.